So, it's been a while since I made one of these videos, but since there's literally 20,000 new faces here, I thought today would be a good time to talk about what exactly we do here on this channel. This channel is a place that is dedicated to teaching you everything I know about 3D modeling, animation, and game design as quickly and clearly as possible. Personally, I wasted so many years of my life watching over bloated tutorials, and really the worst part was every time I forgot something, I had to re-watch those bloated 40-minute tutorials just to find the 15 seconds of information I really needed. Wasting even more precious time, so I decided enough was enough. And in order to make sure that nobody else wasted their life like I did on March 20th, 2019, I started to document and share everything I know as clearly as possible here on YouTube. It's been almost three years now, so if you ever need a crash course in how to model, texture, rig, weight paint, shade, animate, export, program, or publish a game on the App Store, odds are I've already covered it in a full series playlist for you to binge at your own convenience. Something important I'd like to point out is this is not a tips and tricks channel. I do not spend my time looking for random new quirky things to teach you guys. It's more like a documentary of everything I've learned in my journey to become a professional 3D artist. Generally, if I made a tutorial for it, that means it was something I needed to learn at some point in order to complete a project. Which brings me to my next point, regarding where we go with the future. As many of you know, I started this channel primarily as an indie game developer. But then you guys came in and slowly bit by bit this channel became less and less about game development and more about 3D art and animation. And I really learned something important about myself with you guys. Something I really didn't expect. See, as a game developer, you're kind of forced to be the jack of all trades. You do all the modeling, the rigging, the animation, the texturing, the exporting, importing, programming, sound design, advertising, and publishing. And because there's so many different things you need to do, you never really have the chance to become amazing at anything. And through teaching you guys everything I know here on YouTube, I realized that the thing that I actually enjoy doing the most is character creation. That's my favorite thing. And I've realized that I don't want to be the jack of all trades for the rest of my life life. I can do a lot of things, but if there was one thing that I'd like to become amazing at, it would definitely be character creation. And I often spend a lot of time on art station just looking around, because when I see something awesome, it gets me real hyped thinking that one day my stuff will look like this. And in order to understand what skills I lack, I've spent a lot of time DMing the guys who have work I find beautiful. And I asked them, what kind of workflow do you use? What kind of tools and techniques should I learn if I want my work to look like yours? And they pretty much all say the same thing. Practice sculpting and blend a fur. First. Then when you're comfortable, start sculpting in ZBrush. Then use Substance Painter to texture and Maya to retopologize and animate. I actually found out that one of my favorite channels has a class where they teach you their entire AAA workflow. But I couldn't qualify to take it because I didn't have any ZBrush, Substance Painter, or sculpting experience. And the class was $1,500. And it started to become apparent to me that I had a long way to go before my art was going to come close to the level I was hoping to achieve one day. But that was inspiration for me to level up. So I started practicing sculpting for two hours every day for the past six months. And all the enemy viruses that you see in the game are the results of those sculpting sessions that I've been practicing each day. And with the help of our incredible support squad each month, we were able to barely afford the license for ZBrush, a copy of Substance Painter, and even a year of Maya. And to make sure my machine could handle all the new software, some of you even donated hard drives, graphics cards, and even motion capture stuff like phones to help support future tutorials. And I don't really know what else to say other than thank you so much for all the support. It's been a real blessing and I'm truly humbled by the amount of support that everyone who watches, likes, leaves a comment, pledges each month, or straight up donates parts to this channel. It truly inspires me to keep going and makes me excited to learn what I don't know yet. At the moment we're still saving up to be able to take that professional class, but I think it'll really help me step up my 3D character game and when we can finally afford it, you guys can be sure that the more I learn about creating beautiful characters, the more information I'll share with you guys here on YouTube. Something I'm really looking forward to covering is the difference between sculpting in Blender and sculpting in ZBrush. However, the squad and I have decided that we are going to wait until Blender 3.0's release before we create a new series on sculpting. The worst thing that could happen for us is to finish a new series in Blender just for it to become outdated the following week with the 3.0 update. So we're going to wait until the 3.0 release and in the meanwhile address the void in the market that many of you pointed out in the last video. There's clearly a need to start 
start creating a pile of assets for people working in anime style shading. So I figure I might as well show you guys what I plan to add to the pile over the next few months. I spent the last nine months designing assets for my game, but these assets are probably useful for any project revolving around humans fighting off some sort of alien military. So when the game is complete, I will be posting all of the assets for the game up on ArtStation for anyone to download. Here's a list of what I plan to release when the time comes. First, we have the hero, which is the main character that you take control over. And we have her armor, which is what she'll wear into battle. It's heavily inspired off of Gundam and Armored Core. And she has six primary weapons. I tried to cover the most important ones, and I pretty much just followed the Halo model. So we have the heavy pistol for a sidearm, a three-round burst modified G36 rifle for mid-range, a rapid-fire close-range submachine gun, a close-quarters shotgun for tight spots, and a modified 50 cal Barrett sniper rifle for far-range combat. I've also created a bazooka for heavy targets and to blow up clusters of enemies. So those are the main weapons of the Allied forces. And I've also spent a lot of time creating a set of enemy forces. To start the list, we have the small grunts, which are just basic viruses, pretty much acting like the Flood from Halo. Then we have flying viruses, which will be the typical swarm style enemy. And next we have the heavy swarm viruses, which serve the same purpose as the grunt, but have three times the normal size and armor. This will probably be the most common enemy you face. Next we have the virus commando, which serves a similar role to the elites from Halo. They're like the enemy's version of a marine or a space pirate from Metroid. Then we have the virus raider, which is like the glass cannon. Lots of speed, lots of firepower, but very low armor. Next we have virus breaches. These hover-legged based viruses are the fastest enemies in the game. They're good at getting in close, but they're not very strong. Then we have the arrow troopers. These are the strongest type of flying enemies. They're good at avoiding most ground obstacles and will circle their target from the skies. Next is the virus sniper, which is the enemy's go-to ranged unit. Inspired off of Trace from Metroid, he has the ability to become invisible when he stays still. And finally, we have the enemy virus brigader. This is the biggest, baddest, toughest enemy in the game. And he'll be the final boss for those that get to the end. I've also taken the time to make sure that the enemy weapons look distinctly different from the ally weapons. They're more alien and futuristic, Kinda like the difference between the human and the Covenant weapons in Halo. The enemy weapons consist of a high-powered laser rifle, used by the Commandos, a high-powered energy machine gun, which is used by the Raiders, an energy submachine gun for the Flyers, which is basically the Needler, and a long-range rail cannon used by the Snipers. My basic plan for now is that new enemies get introduced to you each level, and when you complete that level, you then get access to the virus weapons that you confiscated in the last level. So in the beginning of the game, all you have is a revolver, but by the end of the game, you'll be able to equip and combine all the weapons you've earned from both the Alliance and enemy forces. There's also a buster rifle used by the final boss, but I still haven't decided if it would be too broken to give to the player at the end of the game or not. So all that will be available after I close production for the game. But the patrons and I want to do something special for you guys. So we're going to make a few community characters in anime style, which you will be able to download for free before the game is completed. These characters will be the Alliance forces that fight alongside you against the viruses. So if you join me next video, I'll tell you the plans I have to make the models for the new fills and killer t-cells that you the community will be able to have next month so again thank you hope you guys liked what you saw and as always hope you have a fantastic day now see you around